Hey everybody, I'm Josh Jackson from WPSculptor.com. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to make a professional website with WordPress. I'm not going to skip any steps because I want everybody to be able to easily follow. This video is perfect for people that maybe want a website for their business, a website for their band, or maybe you just want to start a blog. I'm going to explain everything in detail. If you like the video, please leave your comments in the comment section below, like the video on YouTube, subscribe to my channel, add the video as a favorite. Those things really help me out, so I appreciate your support. I hope you enjoy. In just a moment, I'll walk you through exactly what we're going to be creating and actually show you the website. But first, I'll start with a bullet list. This video tutorial on how to create a professional WordPress website and blog will include setting up a domain name and hosting account with HostGator.com, getting your first month of web hosting for just one cent, installing WordPress, installing a free professional WordPress theme called Customizer, customizing theme settings, creating pages and using the visual editor, creating navigation menus, setting up a slideshow and featured pages on the home page, using a free stock photo website, using a free online application to resize your images, linking social media pages to your site, adding social media sharing functionality to your pages and blog posts, using WordPress plugins, enhancing your site with free professional Google web fonts, creating a contact form, setting up and organizing a blog, creating amazing image galleries, using widgets and sidebar layouts, creating a custom logo with free online tools, basic WordPress settings, and more. All right, so this is the exact same website I'm gonna show you how to create step-by-step step without skipping anything. The first thing we'll do, of course, is set up our website domain and hosting with a company called HostGator.com that I highly recommend. And I've got, actually, I'm using a subdomain here. And that's just so that I didn't have to buy a new domain every time I do a new video. But yours will be whatever you want. I'm going to walk you through that. And then I'm going to show you how to use, how to install an awesome free WordPress theme called Customizer. It's got a lot of cool features. It's got these really cool layouts that we have here. And also, it's extremely responsive, which means that it looks really nice on mobile devices and functions great, just like that. And the drop-down functions really well on mobile devices. And the if we've got drop-down menus within our menu, it's going to look great, too. And then I'm going to show you how to create this logo. And I'm going to introduce you to a couple of free online tools to do that. And uh, I'm going to show you how to set up your menus create drop down menus like I went over and then of course we'll link our social media pages to our website in our header and then also in your footer if you want to. And I've only got three here but you could have quite a few. There are quite a few available. And then of course uh, all the images are going to be from a an awesome free stock photo website called pixabay.com and obviously this is a mock website for an antique automobile uh, business and uh, I'm going to show you how to find these images and use that stock photo website and then I'm going to introduce you to a free tool that lets you uh, crop these images down to the appropriate size so that they fit. And we'll set up our slideshow. And then we'll set up our featured pages on our front page. That's one of the features of this theme that's really cool. And we'll go over all the different uh, color scheme options. Um, obviously, I'm using the orange color scheme, but you could use quite a few. There are several different options. There's a blue, a green a gray, a black, and, and red, I think several others. And then I'm going to show you how to set up our widgets. These are actually called widgets, and I've got three widget areas in the footer. So I'm going to show you how to set those up. And then I'm going to show you how to create normal pages like this. And we've got a sidebar here with a couple of different widgets. This is a custom widget that we created, and we've got a custom menu here that we added to our sidebar. And then these images that are on our page open up like this. And we can use these arrows to look at those, which is a really cool feature of this theme. And then I'm going to show you how to set up a contact page. And your users can fill this out and submit it. And this will send a copy of the contact form to the email address that you specify. So that's a really cool feature. So you don't have to provide your email address if you don't want to. Uh, these are called breadcrumbs, and I'm going to show you how to remove those if you don't want them, or of course you can keep those. And then I'm going to show you how to set up our blog, and you'll be able to use all the blogging features, uh, add categories, 
um, if we click on this and open up this blog post I'm going to show you how to create this really awesome image gallery that you can add to your blog posts or your pages and we're going to discuss what posts and pages are and how to use them and if you click on these it's going to open this up in a really nice carousel like that and you can switch through so I'm going to show you that as well we can just click there to close and I'm going to show you how to use this social media sharing functionality. This is another plugin that we're going to be using and your users can click on these links and share your content really easily. I'm going to go over all of the comment settings that you'll ever need to know. So you don't have to have, you don't have to allow comments if you don't want to, you can specify that. And then of course our about page we're going to create. And all of this I'm going to show you how to do step by step without skipping anything and you'll be able to create this professional website. And uh, the last thing I want to point out I'm going to show you how to use a plugin that will enable you to use Google's directory of free web fonts. And I actually use that for my headings here. So my headings and my link text here, this is not the original font and there are tons and tons of fonts that you could choose. And to me, uh, using a good font for your headings just makes your website all the more professional. So we'll go over all of that without skipping anything and uh, let's just jump right into it. First thing we're going to do is set up our domain name and hosting with HostGator.com and for those of you that are familiar with my videos you know that I highly recommend HostGator. They have extremely reliable services and their customer service is outstanding and uh, I also like that they have hosting plans available where you can just pay month to month and not have to pay in advance. So we're going to go ahead and go to HostGator.com and click on web hosting. Now you have three different hosting options. The hatching plan and the baby plan are the same except that you can have as many domains as you'd like to host on one account with the baby plan so it's a little bit more expensive and uh, that's actually the one I recommend because I like the option to have uh, multiple websites on that one account. And then the business plan is uh, more expensive of course and it comes with this private security feature and a free toll free number so it's not really something that most people need. So. Um, we're going to go with the baby plan, so go ahead and click on order now. And then, before we get our uh, hosting account set up, we need to get a domain name. And if you already have a domain name with another company like GoDaddy, for example, you could check this box here and type that domain name in here. And then after you set up your hosting account, HostGator will give you special instructions on how to link your um, domain name to your website but we're gonna act like we don't have a domain name so we're gonna keep this register a new domain name checked and then we're gonna put in the domain name that we want and uh, just for the purposes of this tutorial I'm gonna use antique car website and then I have the option to do .com, .net, .org, .info, and .biz but we're gonna leave that at .com and you can see here that the domain name is available um, if it was not available it would tell me it would have a message here and I would have to try something else um, but I'm actually going to use a domain name that I already have and I'm going to use a subdomain on that domain name. So it's going to be, um, I think I'm going to use professionalwebsite.quickwebsitecreation.com because I own quickwebsitecreation.com and I don't want to have to buy a new uh, domain name every time I make a new video. But that's what it's going to look like for you when you're looking here. So we're going to stick with that for now and we're going to scroll down and choose our package type. And we do want the baby plan but we don't want to pay for 36 months at a time. We would get a pretty good rate uh, doing it that way, but we're going to buy, we're just going to pay month to month. So we'll select that there. And then you need to type in a username that fits these uh, specifications here, two to eight characters long. I'm going to use WP Sculpt, and then I'm just going to type in one, two, three, four. Remember your security pin, because if you ever need to call in, um, they're going to ask for the security code that you provided. You're going to scroll down and put in your billing information and make sure you use an accurate email address because HostGator, once they set your account up, they will send you a really important email that's got some uh, really important account information that you will need. So fill out your billing information and then you can also pay with PayPal here or a credit card. Once you type that in, you have several hosting options and add-ons that are um, checked by default. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck these because I like to start out as cheaply as possible and you can always add these features later. So I'm going to uncheck those three. And then you have this coupon code section and by default it's got the snappy coupon code and this coupon code gives you 20% off your hosting account purchase. Now I've got two different coupon codes 
and one of them will give you your first month of web hosting for just one cent and that code is WP Sculptor one cent and uh, this actually will also give me credit for referring you so I'll get a small commission and I really appreciate that that's a great way to uh, support me and support this YouTube channel if you do need hosting now uh, I recommend this code for people that are just gonna pay for one month at a time so you're gonna save about ten dollars and if we hit validate and we scroll down you can see that our first month is just one cent and then our domain registration is just twelve ninety five so this domain registration is going to cover us for a full year so it's just thirteen dollars for that whole year and you don't have to worry about renewing your domain for until a year and then our first month of web hosting is just one cent and then after that it's going to be nine dollars and ninety five cents a month so that's what I recommend for people that are just going to pay for one month at a time. Now, if you're going to buy multiple months, um, for example, buy six months at a time, I would recommend WP Sculptor to five, and that's going to save you 25%. So hit validate there. And we're going to scroll up actually and change this so that you can see. Let's change that to six months. So we're going to pay for six months at a time, and if we hit validate, then you'll see we're saving uh, 59.70 minus 44.78 so we're saving close to $15 there so that's what I would recommend it's a better deal to use that coupon code if you're purchasing multiple months at a time but we'll just stick with WP Sculptor one cent validate that change our billing cycle back to one month at a time validate that code and then you of course you get the 45 day money back guarantee and you have the instant account activation and the free support so check this box here that you've read and agree to the terms and then click create account and after you create your account give HostGator a few minutes to set that up and then you're going to check your email all right after a few minutes check your email and you should have an email that looks like this from sales at hostgator.com Go ahead and open that up and uh, this is some really important information that I was uh, talking about earlier that you're definitely going to want to save and you'll have a link to your control panel which is your hosting control panel the username that you put in and then a temporary password that HostGator will give you you'll need that information to access your control panel so what you're going to do is click on this link next to your control panel and then you're going to type in your hosting account name your hosting username and that password that HostGator gave you. You're just going to copy and paste that in. Now, I've actually obviously changed that, so I'm just going to log in with my password and then click log in. And this is what your control panel looks like. Go ahead and close out of those messages. Now, what we need to do here is scroll down and we're going to actually install WordPress. So scroll down under software and services click on this quick install and you won't have all of this this is because I've got multiple accounts going on this one uh, hosting account mul multiple domains that is but you're just gonna click on WordPress and then click on continue and I am gonna install this on a subdomain like I said earlier but yours will just have one option here and it's gonna be your domain and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on my subdomain but again yours will just be the default and you're gonna leave this box blank and you're gonna type in your admin email give it a blog title and then a username and your first and your last name and then you're gonna click on install now And this should just take a few seconds. All right, after that's done, what you're going to need to do is save this uh, username and password. The username is going to be what you put in, but save this password that it gave you because you're going to need that to log into the back end of your website. And it's actually going to take uh, usually a couple of hours for the, your domain name and your hosting account to get officially set up so just give it a couple of hours and then we're going to check back here in just a little bit alright after a couple of hours your website should be available so what you're going to do here on this screen you have a link 
to log into the back end of your website. And what this is, is it's just your domain name and then forward slash WP dash admin. So for me, it's professional website dot quick website creation dot com forward slash WP dash admin. And I can click on this link to open it up that way. And it's going to open it up in a new tab. And this is going to be where I log in to the back end of my website. So I'm just going to go back and I'm going to use the username that I set up and I'm going to use this password. So I'm just going to type in my username and I'm going to paste in that password that it gave me. We're going to change this because obviously you're not going to be able to remember that. And then go ahead and click on login. And while we're logging in, just to remind you, all you would have to do is type in your domain name forward slash WP dash admin and that would take you to the login screen here. All right, and this is what the back end of your website looks like. This is where we're going to make all our changes, add new content, add new pages, add new functionality. And this is the admin bar. And this button right here will take us, it will switch between the front end and the back end. So I'm going to click it. And this is what a brand new WordPress installation looks like. This is the front end of our site. It comes with the new 2013 theme. And you're going to have, this is a sample blog post. And when we click on that, it's going to open up the blog post, the full post. We've got a sample post. And then we've got a sample page here. Obviously, we're going to create our own blog posts and pages. So we're going to delete these eventually. But just to point out what we're starting out with. And there's our sample page. And to log out of our WordPress site, I would just go here and click on this log out button. And that would take me and I would no longer be logged in. So this admin bar would not appear. Uh, unless I was logged in. So we're just going to stay logged in for now. I'm going to go back to the back end of my site by clicking this button. And the first thing we're going to do is disable a plugin that comes pre-installed with WordPress. So go to plugins and click on install plugins. And we're going to disable the WP super cache. And the reason we're going to do that is because that's, it's actually a great plugin and it really can help your site load faster and um, it's really good for that, but some of you may not be able to see your changes that you make to your website right away. So since we're going to be making a lot of changes um, all in this tutorial, then I need to deactivate that plugin, and then we can always reactivate it later. So just click deactivate under WP Super Cache. All right, now that's taken care of, and then we're going to install a our customizer theme. So to do that, we're going to go to Appearance, Themes, click on that, and you just hover over Appearance, and then you get this Themes option. And then we're going to click on Install Themes. And I'm going to search for the Customizer theme. So it's just type it out there, and it's actually spelled uh, with a Z and an R. And then we're going to search. and click on install now. And now that it's installed, we need to activate it so that it overrides the 2013 theme that we saw. So if we click on activate. And here I want to point out that although Customizer is a free theme for you to use, um, it's an excellent theme and the developers have put a lot of work into it so you do have the opportunity to donate to their team this way with PayPal and uh, also you can uh, write a review on wordpress.org and help spread the word that way and you can follow their Google Plus page. Alright let's look at what our site looks like now by clicking on this button and now you can see we have a completely new theme to work with and we're gonna change this up entirely so go back to the back end and the last um, order of business I want to do before we really get into this is go ahead and change your password to something that you can actually remember. So to do that, go to Users, click on All Users, and under WP Sculptor, I'm going to click on Edit. So I just hovered over WP Sculptor, and that Edit option appears. I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to type in my new password right here. You type it in twice in both of those boxes, it'll let you know if it's matching up, and then click on Update Profile.
So now that that's done, I'm going to introduce you to something that is especially unique to the customizer theme, and that is this customize it button. And we can also access this customize it button by going to appearance and clicking on customize it there or customize here. So three different ways to access that. We're just going to click on that button. That's the easiest. And this is going to take us to our theme options editing screen. And what's really great about this is that we can actually see the changes over here take place as we make them over here. Now they won't they won't save unless we click on the save button, but we can uh, try and experiment with different things and see what it would look like. So the first thing I want to do is click on this skin and I'm going to change the skin to the nice orange color. You have all these different options. You have the green and give it a second and it will load that green. It'll look like that. So our buttons would be green, our logo, this bar here, all these buttons, our link text, and you can try the different colors and see which one you like the best, but I'm going to use the orange one. So I'm going to click on that, give it a second. It's going to show us what that would look like, just like that. And then if you click on logo, this is where we would upload our logo. So we'll do that later after we create our logo. And then click here, our site title and tagline. Our site title is going to appear here until we upload a logo. Our logo will replace that text eventually. And then our tagline is here. And I'm just going to go ahead and change that right now to the best antique cars around. Great. And you can see that change take effect. And then of course we'll have our slideshow that we'll set up. And I want to point out that we have these three spots for three featured pages. So uh, when we create our featured pages, we'll be able to specify uh, an image, a featured image, and then it'll have the page title and then we'll have the text and a button to access that page. And also when you click on the image associated with that featured page, it will also take you to the page. And I just want to point out here that right now these gray circles, this is where our featured image will go for each of these pages. And it is telling us that it wants those images to be 270 pixels by 250 pixels. So that's great because we now know exactly what size the image needs to be. And I'm going to show you how to create those images and make those images of that size after we create our pages. So for now, let's just click on save and publish to save the changes that we have made. And then if we close out of here, we'll go directly back to our primary back end and click on this button to look at the front end of our site. And you'll see that we have this new orange selected and we have our tagline selected. All right, now we're ready to add our pages to our site. So to do that, let's go back to the back end, clicking here. And to add a page in WordPress, you're just going to hover over pages and click on add new. And the first thing we do here is give our page a title. This is going to be our about page. That's the first page we're going to create. So give it a title. And then this right here is called the page editor. You have the visual page editor, which is what we're looking at. And then if you click this tab, you have the text editor. Now the text editor is where you would put in HTML code. And we'll get into that later. Uh, but what's really cool about WordPress is the visual editor, also known as a what you see is what you get editor, it will actually type, it will actually create the HTML code for you. So it functions much like a word processor. And if we hit this tab here, it's called the kitchen sink it's going to give us all of these additional formatting options. So it, it like I said, it looks uh, and functions a lot like a word processor. So you could add uh, text and highlight it and change the text color here. You could underline it, you could position it, um, all that good stuff. So the first thing we're going to do with the visual editor is add an image. And normally you would click on this tab here, add media to do that. But first we have to get our image. And for that, I'm going to open up in a new tab. All of the images on this mock site come from a website called pixabay.com. And this is an awesome website. Uh, I highly recommend it if you're looking for free, high quality stock photos. Every image on this site is completely free to use. Um, you don't have to reference, you don't have to get, per get permission, uh, which it's just wonderful. So um, I've already downloaded all of my images, but I'm just going to walk you through how, how to do that. I'm going to search for antique cars and this image right here is the image that I used for my about page. So I'm just going to click on that 
and to download the image all you would do is click on the image again and you have all these different options and uh, all these different size options that you could download. It's all the same image but they're all different sizes. I normally recommend going with the 1280 by 959 in this case. Whichever one's around 1200 pixels wide here, that's the image I recommend because very rarely will you come across a situation where you need an image larger than that. You can always shrink images down and make them smaller without losing quality, but if you try to make an image larger than the original file, it's going to lose quality. So I, all of the images that I'm going to download are going to be this 1280 pixels wide. So I'm just going to click on download. And normally there would be a capture screen where you would have to put in the random letters and text just so that they know you're not a, a robot trying to download all their images, or you could sign up and avoid that altogether. But I've already got all these images saved, like I said, to my hard drive currently, so I'm just going to go ahead and close out of that. And before I add this image to my about page, I want to resize it. I don't want it to be that 1280 pixels wide. I don't want it to be that large. In fact, I want it to be considerably smaller. So to do that, I'm going to use a really great tool called Pixlr. That's P-I-X-L-R. So go to Pixlr.com. And then you're going to click on the Pixlr Editor. And this is a wonderful free online application for making edits to your images. And when you get this screen, you're going to open the image from your computer because you've saved it to your desktop or to a folder on your hard drive. And I'm going to find the image. This is the about page image. And you can see this is the 1280 by 959 image size. The dimensions are there. So I'm going to open this up. And this is our image. Now I want you to look at this. In the bottom left of the screen we have where it says 82. That's the percentage that we're viewing it at. So this image is actually larger than what you're seeing. So if we click on 100, this is the full sized image right here. So I want to be able to see the, the whole thing and the whole image that I'm working with. So I'm going to type in 60 there. So I'm looking at it at 60%. And I want this image to be 300 pixels wide. So I want to shrink it down quite a bit. So to do that, I'm just going to go to image, image size. And in width, where it says 1280, I'm going to change that to 300. And as long as this constrained proportions box is checked, it's automatically going to adjust my height so that it matches up with the original ratio. And then I'm going to click OK. And again, we're viewing this at 60%. So if we change that to 100, this is the actual size of the image. And this is the actual size I want it to appear on my site. So now to save that, just go to File, click on Save. And I'm going to call this About Us Image Small, just so that I know that this is the one I've adjusted. And then I want it to be a JPEG. And 80% quality is, is just fine for the web. So we're going to click on OK. And I'm going to tell that where I want it in my desktop, or on my hard drive. That's a good place for it. Click on Save. And now go back to your page editor and click on Add Media. And we're going to upload the file to our media library. If we already had it in our media library, we could click here. But we're going to upload it. So click on Select Files. And then you're going to find that image on your hard drive. And then click on Open. And notice that this is the one that I just created, the 300 by 225 pixels. Just click on Open. And it's going to upload that file. Now here I want to point out, I'm not going to go through this step for all the images, but I do want to point out that it is really good for search engine optimization practice to put in a caption, an alternate text, and a description text that describes what your image is about. So if you were really doing this on your website, you would want Google and other search engines to be able to know what your image represented. And because they can't see images, it's they use this information here. So we would put in... Um, these three fields here. And then we want the alignment, we want to change that to left because I want my text to appear to the right of this image and wrap around it. So I want the image to be aligned to the left. And if I keep this link to media file, uh, if I keep it like that, then when you clicked on this image, it would open up in a separate tab. And I don't want that. In fact, I don't want it to link to anything. So I'm just going to say none. Now I could say custom URL. I did that and then I could type in or paste in a URL and link that to any 
other web page on the entire internet, such as google.com, for example. But we're just going to keep that to none, and we do want this to be the full size. So we're going to insert into page. All right, and now that that's done, I'm going to put in some text here. And if I click right here, it's going to bring the cursor up here to the top there. And that's because we aligned it to the left. So my text is going to wrap around the image on the right. And I've got some text. I'm just going to copy and paste here. So you don't have to watch me type all that out. And I'm just going to paste it in just like that. Now, if I click here and click on enter, that's going to give me more space here. And if I wanted to make text bold, I could highlight it. And like I said, this functions just like a word processor. I could highlight it and click on this large B. And if I wanted any piece of text or any section of text to be a link to another page on my site or to anywhere else on the web, all you would have to do is highlight it and then click on this link icon and then you could type in or paste in the URL that you want that to link to. And you could also click on this and link to other pages or blog posts that you have on your site. But since we don't really have anything and since I don't want that to link to anywhere anyways, I'm just going to click on cancel and then I'm going to publish the page. All right, after your page is published, let's go ahead and click on view page here. And this is going to open it up. And that is our about page. And I'm going to click on this, this uh, edit page button here. And that's going to take me back to the back end and to the uh, page editor screen for the about us page. And uh, just so you know, if you wanted to edit this image, now that you've got it into the page, you would just simply click on it and click on this icon here and that's going to pull up those same options that we were dealing with earlier. And if you wanted to delete it, you could click on it and click on this or the delete key. So just a couple of things there to note. And uh, now we're going to add our other pages. So to do that, we're going to click on, we could click on add new here or add new here. So click one of those and we're going to add our Rolls Royce page. So we're going to go ahead and give it a title. And I've got some text that I want to paste in there. I'm going to copy and paste that in. And then I've got a, an image that I want to put in. And uh, like I said earlier, I downloaded all of my images from Pixabay at the 1280 pixels wide size. So I'm going to insert that image after I upload it. So I'm going to click on upload files and then I'm going to select files. And I'm going to use Rolls Royce one, click on open. All right, and I'm actually going to give this one a, a caption, and we'll just say Rolls Royce one there. And I'm going to have alignment set to none, and I want to link to the media file in this case. I'm going to show you what that's going to do. And then here on the size, I need to change that to the full size because I want it to take up as much space as it possibly can. And WordPress is really good about uh, taking a really large image and then shrinking it down to where it's as big as it can possibly be and still fit on the page. So that's what's going to happen here. And then I'm going to insert into page. And then I'm going to click here and click on the enter button, scroll down, and I'm going to add media again. And I'm going to upload another Rolls Royce picture, Rolls Royce 2 there. And again, this is full size, 1280 pixels wide image, you can see there, and give it a caption. And alignment set to none. I want to link to the media file and I want it to be full size. So I'm going to insert into page. And now when we publish this page, and then when we click here and view the page, I want you to notice when I click on the image, it's going to open it up in this, this really cool light box. And this is a light box unique to the customizer theme specifically. I'm going to show you how to use a, another light box that can be used with any WordPress site later on, but this one's really cool because you can open it up and if there's another image on the same page that has um, that's linked to the media file, like we set, it'll also transition with these arrows and show you that other image. And we just click on that X button to exit out of that. And then I'm going to go back and click on edit page. 
And because I want this page to be one of my featured pages, that means I need to create an image that's 270 pixels by 250 pixels so it will fit on the home page in one of those three slots. So to do that, I'm going to go back to Pixlr and I'm going to go to File, Open Image, and I've got this image. I'm going to use Rolls Royce 1. So I'm going to open that up. And again, this is the full sized image. So instead of using the image size tool, because I have a specific width and height that I want to use, I'm going to have to use the crop tool. So first I want to view the whole thing, the whole image that I'm working with. So I'm going to change this to 60%. And then make sure the crop tool is selected. It's this upper left tool here. It should be selected by default. And then under constraint, you're going to click this and change that to output size because we have a specific output size that we want it to output. And we're going to change the width to 270 and then click here and change the height to 250. And now when we click, we can click anywhere in this gray area outside of the image and it's going to automatically start at the corner of our image. So click, hold, and drag and we're just going to uh, stretch this all the way across the image and right there. And be careful to not let this cursor get out in here otherwise you just have to start over and click, hold, and drag again. But once you get it to the size that you want it, release it, and it's going to bring up this box. Just let go of the of the mouse, and then you're going to click, hold, and drag this over to position the part of the image that you want it to crop. And then when we hit enter, it's going to automatically crop that and resize our image to 270 by 250. And if we view this at 100%, now we're looking at a 270 pixels wide by 250 pixels tall image. And I'm going to go ahead and do that exact same process for the other two featured images that I'm going to use uh, for our other two featured pages. And uh, you don't need to watch me do that because it's the exact same process. So I'll be right back. All right, now I've got my other two featured images set up. And uh, just to point out, of course, with each one after I cropped it, I went to File and Save, just like we did with our About image. And then I gave it a title. I named it uh, each one of my featured images. I put Featured underneath the title of the car and then I saved it um, so that now we have access to all of our small featured images. So I'm going to go back to our page editor and the place that you add the featured image we're going to scroll down and right here we're going to click on set featured image and we're going to upload the file and this is the one that we just cropped. It's going to be Rolls Royce 1 featured and notice that it's the 270 by 250 click on open and we're not going to worry about the descriptive text click on set featured image and click on update the page and if we view the page by clicking here or here I just want you to know that that featured image is not going to show up anywhere here because that's that's the image that we're going to use and set up for displaying on our home page later on so let's go ahead and create our other pages by going back to the WordPress backend. Click on Pages, Add New, and the next page we're going to create is our Ford Model A page. So give it a title. And I'm going to paste in some text like I did with the Rolls Royce. I'm going to add some media, upload files on select files and click on Ford model a and this is the 1280 pixel image click on open and I want it full size linked to media file alignment none click on insert into page and then I want to set a featured image because this is another one of my featured images so I need to upload that cropped file that I've already got saved to my hard drive and this is going to be Ford Model A featured. Click on open. And we're going to set featured image. And then we're going to publish the page. Okay, and then we're going to add a new page by clicking here. And this one's going to be our Mercedes page. So give it a title. I'm going to paste in this text. I'm going to click on Add Media, same process, same exact process. Upload file, click on Select Files, and Mercedes-Benz. 
I want the large file first, the full size, alignment 9, link to media file. Click on insert into page. And then we're going to set a featured image for our Mercedes page because that's the third page that's going to appear on our home page. Upload the file, click on select files, Mercedes Benz featured, click on open, click on set featured image and publish the page. And then I'm going to create our home page and uh, to do that add new and we're just going to call it home and I'm going to put in welcome to our home page and that's all I'm going to do with this page for now I'm not going to do anything else but we'll work with this here in a moment so click on publish and then I'm going to add a new page and create our what will become our blog page and I'm just going to call this blog and we'll work with this page later on and, and set our WordPress settings up correctly but for now just click on publish alright and then we're going to click on or create our contact page so add a new page we're going to call it contact us and we'll work with this one again as well so just click on publish Alright, and then let's go ahead and view the front end of our WordPress site by clicking here. And you'll see that nothing's changed. Not, not a single thing. We don't have a menu. We don't have any of these featured images set up. It's exactly the same. And the reason why we can't access any of these other pages that we've created is because we haven't created our menu yet. So to add a menu, click on Add a Menu here. And that's going to take us to the menu editing page on our WordPress backend and if you wanted to access that a different way you could just go to appearance and then menus and we're gonna create a new menu by clicking here and we're gonna call this main navigation menu and we're gonna click create menu and then I need to add pages to that menu so here on the left I have all the pages that I've created so I'm gonna select all of them and then I'm gonna click add to menu now we're going to save the menu and let's go ahead and take a look at our site now. Oh actually we've got to check this box here that says under theme locations we want this to be our main menu and now let's save the menu otherwise it wouldn't have shown up as our main menu and now we can view our front end of our WordPress site and now you have all of our the pages that we've created right here all the way across and each one of these links to its appropriate page. The sample page that we haven't deleted yet, the about page that we created, and all of our other pages. Now let's go back and I'm going to show you how to rearrange these and also how to create a drop down menu. So let's go back to the back end of our WordPress site and we're going to go to appearance menus and it's automatically pulling up our main navigation menu. So to rearrange these all you have to do is click on the menu item that you want to, to move, click hold and then drag it to where you want it. And make sure it's not over here, not underneath one and over like that. I'm going to show you what that is in a minute. But once you get it where you want it, just let go. So I'm going to go ahead and rearrange these the way I want them. Click hold and drag. I'm going to do my Ford under the Rolls Royce then Mercedes Benz under the Ford and I want my blog after the cars and then contact us and about us and then to delete a menu item I don't want my sample page on there since it's going to be removed anyway you would click here and you would click on remove and just so you know if we wanted to change um, what this page is called on our menu the page is called sample sample page so that's gonna take that title by default but we could change it here to sample for example if that's what we wanted it to say and then when we did that and save the menu it would make that change but we're gonna remove this entirely so we're just gonna click on remove and now we're gonna save it and we still won't have our drop-down menu but I do want to point out by viewing the front end of our WordPress site 
they are rearranged now. We have our home page, then we have our cars, then blog. So let's go back and make that drop down, appearance, menus. All right, we want to create a drop down menu called cars. And since we don't have a page called cars, what we need to do is create a link. So we're going to click here and click on that arrow underneath or next to link. And we're going to call this next to link text. We're going to call this cars. So that's what it's going to display on our menu as. And then if we had a page or if we wanted this to link to another page, we could give it a URL, but we, since it's a drop down menu, it's not going to link anywhere else anyway, but we're just going to put in the pound key there and that's going to, WordPress is going to know what to do with that and know not to have it link anywhere. And then we're going to click on add to menu. And then we're going to drag this up underneath home. And we don't want it over. There we go. And then the Rolls Royce, the Ford, and the Mercedes we want underneath cars as a drop down. So we're going to drag, click, hold, and drag those over just a little bit, just like that. And now those are all going to be drop downs when you click on cars. So save the menu. And then let's go back and view our site. All right, and now you have all of these menu items here. And we have our cars. And when you click on cars, it's going to display these other three, the cars pages. And we can click on those now and be taken specifically to those pages. All right, now let's set up our home page. And to do that, we're going to go back to the back end of our site. But we're going to go back to the customize it section by clicking on this button here. And we're going to click on front page. And that's going to bring up the front page options. And I want you to notice right now, currently the front page displays our latest posts. So if we scroll down underneath these featured page uh, sections here, you'll have our latest post. And this is this happens to be the sample blog post since we haven't created any other blog posts. We're going to change that to our home page. And so you're going to click on where it says your latest posts and change this to a static page. And then scroll down and under front page, you're going to select the home page that we've created. And this is going to uh, update that so that we can see what this would look like. Now you can see that we have the content here that we put in for our home page. And we're just going to leave no sidebars layout for now. And then we're going to set up our featured page pages here by going, we can go ahead and click on front page. And actually we want to keep that front page down. So we're going to scroll down and under featured page options here, we want to enable that. If we disabled it, all of that would go away completely just like that. And we would just have our homepage content and our slideshow. But we do want to enable that. And we do want to show the images. If we uncheck that, then uh, even if we added the images, they still wouldn't show up there. But we do want to have those enabled as well. So we're going to select our home page, our home featured page one. And that's going to be our Rolls Royce page. So we're just going to select Rolls Royce there. And that's going to update. And that's automatically going to put in the Rolls Royce featured image because we put in the 270 by 250 image as our featured image in the Rolls Royce page. And it's automatically going to put in that page title right here. And what's really cool is it's automatically going to uh, grab the first 200 characters or so and put them in here. Now we could override what this says by scrolling down under featured text one. In this area, we could type in something and it would override it like that, but we're just going to leave that blank. And that's just going to grab the first 200 characters of the text on the page. And that will refresh once we save this. So I'm going to select my featured page two, and that's going to be my Ford model a page. And then my featured page three is going to be my Mercedes Benz page. All right. And then we're going to save and publish that. Okay, it's saved and then we're going to close out of, out of the customize it section and then we're going to click on our website title to view the front end of our WordPress site. And now you can see we have our featured pages set up correctly and we have our home page as our front page. And that's the home page content right there. And then when you click on read more under each one of these featured sections, you get, you're going to get taken directly to that page just like that. 
All right, now we're going to create our slideshow. So to access our slideshow, we're going to click on the Customize It button. And we're going to click on our front page options here. And you'll see here under Slider Options, we currently have it set to the Demo Slider. If we click on this, we can change that to No Slider, and that would just completely disable the slideshow on our home page. But we do want to have a slider, and since we haven't created another slider, it's only got the Demo Slider as our only option, so we'll leave it there for now. And then I personally prefer the look of, um, or I personally prefer not having a full width slider. So I'm going to uncheck that box and that's what it's going to look like. I like that look better. It's just a personal preference. And then we're going to leave our slides. They stay on the page for five seconds and we're just going to leave that. I think that's a good amount of time. So uh, we're going to go ahead and save and publish this. And the only change there is that it's not going to be the full width slider anymore. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Now before we add our slides, we obviously have to create them and we need to know how big we need those images to be. So to figure out how large those images need to be, click on the site title to view the front page of your website and hover over one of the slides and right click or control click if you're using a Mac and click on view image. Now I'm using the Firefox browser so your browser may do this a little differently but with the Firefox browser when you do that it's going to open the image up in a new tab and at the top it's going to tell you the image dimensions and you can see here that this is 1200 by 500 pixels wide so it's a good practice to figure out what the default theme settings are using and then just replicate that in your own images so good thing for us we have all our images saved at 1280 pixels wide at least or uh, and then at least 500 pixels tall they're actually much uh, taller than that but we can always crop down like I've talked about earlier so Let's go ahead and close out of that and that's going to put us back into our Pixlr. Let's go ahead and exit out of all of these. I've already saved all these so we don't need to worry about that. Okay and then I'm going to open an image from my computer and I'm going to open that original Rose Rolls-Royce picture and again this is the full-sized image just like before I'm going to view this at 60 percent and then using the crop tool make sure that's selected it's the upper left tool and make sure the constraint is still set to output size and we're going to change this to 1200 by 500 and then you're going to click hold and drag out here and drag that all the way over and then when you get it where you want it, let go of that. And then move the cursor over and then click and hold again and drag that down to where you want it. We're going to leave that right there. And then when you get it where you want it, just like before, click on Enter. And we are looking at this at 60%. So if we change that to 100, that's the 1200 by 500 slide for our first slide. And I'm going to save this as Rolls-Royce slide and that JPEG's good quality of 80s fine and I'm just gonna save it in that main folder and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing to my other two slide images alright I did the exact same thing to the other two slides so that I have my three slides that are all 1200 by 500 pixels wide and uh, I just need to go back to the back end of my site to create our slideshow so I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of these we don't need those screens anymore and I need to open up a new tab and go back to my website by just typing in my domain and I'm still logged in because I never logged out so I can click on the title to access the back end then I'm gonna go to media and click on add new then I'm gonna click on select files and then I'm gonna select all of the slides and upload all of those On open, select files, select the file, and click open. All right, now that those have all uploaded to my site, what I'm going to do to create my slideshow is click on, I want my first slide to be the Rolls Royce slide, so I'm going to click on edit, and that's going to open it up in a new tab. And if I scroll down, 
first of all, this is where I would put in my normal search engine optimization description text right here. And then right here under slider options, I want to check, I want to click on where it says no, and that's going to change to yes. And when I do that, it's going to pull up these other options. Now I'm going to open in a new tab by hitting control click and then open link a new tab on my title to open up the front end so that you can see this. This is where the title would go and that's right here the title text and then the descriptive text is of course this right here this text and then our button title is going to be this text right here and these are the three spots where you would put that in for the button text we're just going to say read more for the descriptive or for the title we're going to take off the slide part i just want to say rolls royce and then i'm going to say under description check out our new Rolls Royce. Okay, and then I could change the text color here by clicking that and changing it, but I just want to leave that the way it is. And we don't have a slider created yet, and it's telling us that right here, you haven't created any sliders yet. So to do that, all you need to do is click in this text box, give uh, your new slider a name, we're going to call it Homepage Slider, and then click on Add a Slider. And now we've created our slideshow and we've added one image to it. Now we need to update this at the top there. And then I can close out of this screen and I'm going to go back to this, this tab here. And then I'm going to open up my second slide, which is going to be the Ford slide. So I'm going to click on edit and then I'm going to scroll down, change this to yes, and then put in my three text box information. Then I'm going to keep the read more button text. And then I need to choose a slider. Now that I've created a slider, I have the option to uh, select it there. Now, if I wanted to create another slider, I could do that and just simply type in a new slider title here and then click on the add slider. But I'm going to just use the one homepage slider that I've got. And now it's going to add it to that uh, homepage slider. And I could rearrange these slideshow images by clicking and holding and dragging and moving those up just like we did with the menu items, but we're just going to leave that the way it was and then go back up and click on update. And then we're going to exit out of that tab and then open up our Mercedes slide and do the exact same thing. Change that to yes. Add our descriptive, uh, descriptive text. Put in our button text. And select a slider, and I'm going to select the home page slider. And one important thing that I actually left out, we need to um, mess with this box we need to go back and on each one of our slide images we need to set the link to the appropriate page so for uh, this is the Mercedes slide we need this to link to our Mercedes page so we're gonna do that here and we're gonna go ahead and click on update so that that's taken care of and then we're gonna scroll back down and we can access these other two slides from this section so I'm gonna change the edit the Rolls Royce slide by clicking on that there I'm going to scroll down and link that to the Rolls Royce page so that when people click on the read more button for that slide it's going to take them to the correct page and I'm going to update that. And I can close out of that and then I can open up my Ford slide, scroll down and change that to be my Ford page. I'm going to scroll up and update there. Okay, and now I can exit out of this tab. And then I'm going to go back to the Customize It button. And click on Front Page. And now when we scroll down under Slider Options and click on Demo Slider, we now have this Home Page Slider option. So click on that, and it's automatically going to put in our new slideshow, just like that. And it'll transition automatically. If you want, you can use these arrows to transition. 
and then each page is going to be linked to the appropriate page when you click on read more it's going to take me in this case to the four page just like that now I need to save and publish this otherwise it would not take effect and it would still show the demo slider and then when I close out and click on my site title we now have our slideshow now we're going to add our social media to our header we've already got this RSS link in there by default so we're going to add our social media to our header and to our footer and to do that let's go ahead and click on the customize it button there and then you're going to click under social links click on that and that's going to drop down the social links options and we do want it to appear in our header and our footer so we're going to leave those checked and basically you have all these different options all these different social media platforms that you can use with this theme so all you have to do is copy and paste or type in your URL that links to your page and that box will appear so if we delete the RSS feed and this updates it's going to remove that from our header and from our footer so we're going to use Twitter and I'm just going to open up a new tab and go to twitter.com and then what you would do if you had a Twitter account you would go to your Twitter page and then you would just copy and paste your URL in there and then you would do the same thing for Facebook and for Google I believe it's plus.google.com so now when those update it's gonna have all of those different social media links there it's that simple and then they're gonna be in the footer as well since we have that box checked so just click on save and publish and close out of that and let's open our site up in a new tab by right clicking or control clicking click on open link a new tab and you can see we have our social media there now we're gonna add our uh, additional fonts to our site using the Google web fonts plugin and this is in my opinion this is one of the best things you can do for your website as long as you don't get too crazy with it adding a really cool font can can make all the difference in um, adding that professional boost to your site so I'm gonna keep this page open so that we can see the text change the font change and you can see that uh, by just refreshing that in a moment but to add that first we're gonna go in a new tab I'm just gonna click on this Twitter tab you're gonna go to google.com and type in Google web fonts you're gonna click on the first link here and Google has this library of fonts that are available for everyone to use for free and there are tons and tons of fonts you can just browse through uh, right here is where you would type in the text that you want to see so if I wanted to see read more I could just type that in and it's going to show me what each font would look like um, and you can just scroll down and this just goes on and on and on and you can just find a font that you like and once you find the one you want the title of it will be right here underneath just remember that and this plugin that I'm going to use you would just be able to pull it up with this plugin so let's go back the one I'm going to use actually before we go back the font that I like is called Laura and if I type that in it's this one right here and I just found that by doing the same thing I was talking about earlier by just scrolling through until I found one I liked so we're gonna add this font plugin by going back to the back end of our site and we're gonna go to plugins and we're gonna click on add new then we're gonna search for WP and I believe it is WP Google fonts and then click on search plugins and this is going to be the first plugin so what you're going to do is click on install now click on OK and then just like we did with our customizer theme we're going to have to activate the plugin so click on activate plugin there all right and now that the plugins installed we're gonna go to settings and then we now have this Google fonts option that was no, not there before so click on Google fonts and you have you can add all kinds of fonts to your site I'm just gonna stick with the one so underneath font one click here and these are all in alphabetical order and since I want to use Laura I'm just gonna type in L and it's automatically gonna take me to the L section 
and then I can just scroll down to Laura there. Just click that. And you can mess around with these options here. I like to leave it at the default. And then you need to specify which elements which HTML elements you want that font to be applied to. And you could click on all body tags and that would apply it to everything. We don't want to do that. In my opinion, it's uh, more professional to leave your paragraph text, which is the smaller text uh, of your site, to leave that uh, at the default. And we're just going to change all of our heading texts. So select heading one, headline one through headline six. And we're just going to click on save all fonts. Now if we go back up to our home page tab, watch this font change here. When I refresh the page, and then you can see it there at the, on the website title, and then if you scroll down, to me it just looks so much more professional having it set like that. So notice that it did not affect the menu here, and if I click on my about page, you'll see that it did not affect this text here. Now, if I go back and click on Show Options, I'm going to check this Lists uh, box there, and that's uh, this LI tags, that stands for List Item. And you don't have to really know much about HTML, but I will say that um, almost all of your navigation menus are going to be coded as List Items. So this is going to affect all of our List Items and navigation menus when we save this. So save that, and if I go back and refresh, you'll see the menu changes fonts. And I like that, that look a lot better. And this is still the same, I'm gonna leave it like that. If you wanted to change uh, what was in your paragraphs, you would just go back, click on show options, and you would select this paragraph there. But we're just gonna leave that as it is. Now if we go back and click on our contact page, obviously we haven't added anything. So what we're gonna do is add a contact form plugin to our WordPress site and we'll set a contact form up on that page. Go back to your back end and we're going to click on plugins, hover over plugins rather, and click on add new. And there's a really great contact form plugin called contact form 7. So search for that and it's going to be the first one that pulls up here. Click on install now just like we did with the web fonts. Click on OK. and then we're going to activate the plugin. And now instead of our contact settings appearing under the settings tab, we have a contact tab. So click on that contact tab and that's going to take you to this page and by default it sets a contact form up for you. So go ahead and click on that. And the default contact form is going to have a space for people to put in their name, their email, the subject of their contact form, and their message and it's going to also by default mail a copy of that form when it's submitted to the email address that you provided at uh, the very beginning when we downloaded WordPress onto your hosting account. Now you could of course change this here by deleting this and typing in a new email address and then you would of course want to save that if you chose to do that. But we're going to leave it as it is and to put this contact form on our contact form page we're going to copy the text here and then I'm going to go to Pages, All Pages, and I'm going to click on my Contact Us page to open up the Contact Us page editor. And then I'm going to switch over to the text editor because I prefer to use the text editor when I'm using short codes. And a short code is exactly what we just copied. And we're going to paste in that short code right there. And then we're going to update the page. And now if we go back to the contact page on our website, we're going to refresh it. And you'll see we have this really nice contact form with all those fields. And when if you sent it and you put in you know, the required fields, of course, it would send a copy of that form to your email address. And let's go back and uh, let's actually go back to all pages while we're here and remove our sample page. Just click the box next to the sample page and we're going to click on trash. Now that didn't permanently delete it. It's one thing that's good about WordPress. Um, it just makes it to where you don't have to look at it anymore. To delete it permanently you would click on trash and then you would just hover over it and delete permanently.
All right, now we're going to set up our blog, and before we do that, I want to explain the difference between static pages, the posts page, and blog posts. Basically, a static page is what you think of as a traditional web page. It would be something that doesn't really change very often, such as your about page or your contact page, and all of the pages that we've created so far are considered static pages. Now, a posts page is what you think of when you think of a blog. A posts page starts out as a normal static page, but you tell WordPress that you want that page to display your latest blog posts. So then, every time you create a blog post, an excerpt and featured image from that post will show up at the top of your posts page, and your older blog posts will show up beneath it. I know that may seem confusing, but I'm going to show you what that looks like, and I think you'll understand. So let's go ahead and open up our site, or let's go to view our site. And when I click on the blog page, this is just a normal page. This is the page we created called blog, and we didn't have any content, so nothing's displaying there. Now we're going to tell WordPress that we want this blog page to be our posts page. So to do that, we're going to go back to the back end of our site, and you're going to go to settings, and then go to reading. Now I want you to notice that currently front page displays and we have a static page checked and then the front page is set to home. And this is because earlier on in the video when I set this, when we set up our front page in the customize it screen here, we specified that. Now this is where we select what our posts page is going to be. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to select blog and then I'm going to save the change. All right, and now if I go back to my blog page and refresh the page, you're going to see it's going to display my latest blog post. And it happens to be the sample post because we haven't created our own blog post yet. And normally an image would appear here in that circular fashion that this scene does, but there is no image associated with the sample posts. So obviously nothing's displaying. So let's go ahead and delete this sample post by going back to our back in and we're going to go to posts, all posts. This works just like we did with pages but now we're working with blog posts and we have the sample post here so I'm just going to hover over that and click on trash. And now if we go back to our blog and refresh the page that post is no longer going to be there. So let's go ahead and add our blog posts. And to add our blog posts we're going to go back to the back end and you would just go to posts and then we're going to click on add new or you could click on add new here and the first post that we're going to create is going to be called blog post number one how to embed YouTube videos then I'm going to copy and paste in some text here just like that and we are and actually I'm going to switch over to the visual editor because that's where I want to be and now to embed a YouTube video, I'm going to hit enter there and my video is going to go beneath, beneath this text. I'm going to open up a separate tab and go to YouTube. And then I'm just going to search for 1985 Rolls Royce convertible. Click on search. And the first video that comes up here, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to click the video just to pause it and now all you have to do with the new version of WordPress is copy and paste the URL it's that simple as long as you're using the the page editor you'll just copy that go back in and paste it there and now the video will show up and take up as much space as it possibly can it'll take up the full width of the page uh, so however wide this content area this text is that's how wide the video is going to be so when we click publish, and then we go back up and view our site, and click on our blog, notice that we now have our new blog post, and we don't have a featured image because we haven't yet set one. So that'll be showing up in a moment when we set that, but for now let's click on our blog post to see the full contents of it, and we now have our video and our text here. To go back and add our featured image I'm going to click on this edit 
button there. It's going to take me directly back to the blog page, the blog post editing screen here. I'm going to scroll down to set featured image, just like we did with our featured pages. Click on that, and I have already cropped down an image for this blog post. Select files. And again, this is a 270 by 250 pixel image. And I use the exact same process with Pixlr that I did with the other featured images. And then I'm going to say set featured image. And the other thing I'm going to do with blog posts, you always want to give your posts a category. And this is, uh, I'm going to show you later how to add a categories widget to your sidebar. But this is really helpful for users that want to browse through your blog posts. They can look at your categories and it's just much more uh, easy for them. So we're going to uncheck uncategorized. By default, it will put it in the uncategorized category. So uncheck that and then we're going to click on add new category. And we're going to call this embed YouTube videos. And we're going to say add new category. And then we're going to update the page. And now if we go view our site again, you'll notice and click on blog, you'll notice that we have our featured image showing up there, which is really, really cool. So we can still click on it and we'll get the same content just like that. Now let's go back to our back end, clicking on our site title. And we're going to add our second post. So to do that, let's go to posts, add new. And we're going to give this a title here of blog post number two, adding an awesome image gallery. I'm going to paste in this text. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to add a new category called image gallery. And I'm going to click on add new category. Now, just so you know, if, if we wanted to do another blog post that was also in the embed YouTube videos category, for example, we could just simply check that box and uncheck any other categories that don't apply. And we can put these in multiple categories, as you can see. But we're just going to leave this one in the image gallery category. Scroll down and set our featured image. We're going to upload the file as I already have it saved on my hard drive. Click on open and then click set featured image. And then we're going to publish the blog post. And now let's go view the front end of our WordPress site. Click on blog. And now you'll see the excerpts from our two blog posts there. And because the second blog post is the one we added most recently, it's going to appear at the top. And we can click on it to get taken to the full contents of the page, just like that. All right, now to add our image gallery and carousel to this blog post, we're going to go to go back to our back end here. And we're going to go and first I want to point out, go to plugins and just click on plugins. I want to point out that by default, we have this Jetpack by WordPress.com plugin and it's already activated. It comes, in, it already comes activated with WordPress when you downloaded it. So you have this Jetpack tab here. So go ahead and click on that Jetpack tab. And the first thing we need to do is connect our website to a WordPress.com account. So click on this connect to WordPress.com. And this is, uh, Jetpack is a, an amazing set of features that WordPress.com provides that you can now use on your WordPress.org version of WordPress, which is what we're running. So you're going to need to get an account. It's very easy to set up. And if you don't have an account, just click on need an account here and just walk through these steps and sign up. So once you're signed up, you're going to go back and you're going to type in your email address. This is the one I used to set up my WordPress.com account and then type in your password. And then you're going to click on authorize Jetpack. And after this authorizes, it's going to redirect you back to the Jetpack page on your WordPress site. And again, if you needed to access this page, 
all you would do is, is click on the jetpack tab there. So we're going to activate our carousel plugin. Just click on activate. Okay, and then we're going to scroll down and activate our, let's see, I must have missed it, our tiled galleries plugin. Click on activate. All right, great. Now that that's done, let's go back to posts, all posts, and we're going to open up that most recent blog post that we did, adding an awesome image gallery. Let's click on that. And then within the visual editor, we're going to click enter beneath to, to get to a line beneath our text here. And then we're going to click on add media. And this time we're going to add an image gallery. So we're going to click on create gallery. And we're going to need to upload files for our gallery. So click on upload files and then select files. And I've already got, I'm going to use six images that I downloaded from Pixabay. And they're all 1,280 pixels wide. So they're all that full size. I'm going to select all of them. And the way I did that was just clicked on the top one, uh, held down shift, and then clicked on the bottom one. And I'm going to click on open. And that's going to upload all six of those images. And then I'm going to click on create a new gallery. And now I'm going to give all of these images a caption. And I'm just going to say, this is an image caption. And then I'm going to say, this is another image caption. And I'm just going to paste that. And paste this. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you where the caption will show up with our new gallery. All right, and then now the link to when you set up a gallery, it doesn't really matter what you link it to. It's going to take on the gallery, uh, whatever the default is for the gallery and the carousel, and it's going to display in the carousel that we're going to create. So we're just going to leave that at attachment page. And then now here I have several different options for what type of gallery I want to display. If you click on thumbnail grid, you can set it up as a thumbnail grid, a tiled mosaic, square tiles, circles, and a slideshow. Well, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways. You can experiment with all of these, but we'll start with, uh, let's do circles. And then we're going to insert the gallery. And I'm going to update the page, or the blog post, rather. And after that updates, I'm going to click on View Post to be taken to the blog post on the front end of my WordPress site. And now you'll see we have our circled gallery. And we could click on any one of these. So this is the tiled gallery. If we click on any one of these, we'll get taken to the carousel. And the carousel is really cool because you can scroll through all the images in the gallery and see those in this nice carousel screen. And to exit out, you could click this X. You could click on the black here, which is what I'm going to do. Or you could use the escape key. Now let's go back and edit this blog post. And I don't typically use the circular uh, method of displaying those. So I'm going to change that by clicking on this gallery box here. And then that brings up this option. I'm going to click on that icon. And I'm going to change this to square tiles. And then I'm going to update the gallery. And click on update. And now when I view the post, it's going to display just like that. And what's really cool, this is why I put in the captions. When you hover over these, the caption pulls up, whatever image caption you used. And this functions the same way when you click on one of the images, it opens it up in the carousel. And let's go back. And the last thing I want to show you about the carousel and the image gallery, if you oh, let's click on this edit button, if you click on the gallery and you click on this icon to edit the gallery, all you have to do to rearrange these images is click, hold, and drag just like that. And then you would update, of course. But we're just going to leave it in that order.
And then the next thing I want to do is add the social media sharing plugin from Jetpack. So we're going to go back to Jetpack, click on that. And then we're going to scroll down and we're going to click on configure next to the sharing plugin or underneath the sharing plugin. And then all we have to do is scroll down here. We have all these different options of sharing that we can provide for our users. And all you have to do is take the ones that you want to add. So we're going to use Facebook. You're going to click, hold, and drag, and drag it in and let go under there. So we're going to use Facebook. We're going to click, hold, and drag LinkedIn, Twitter, and let's just do Tumblr. And you can do as many as you want. But what's also cool is you can add a more tab. So if we wanted email under our more tab, we're going to do that there. And then we want to dig and Pinterest, for example, and then Google Plus. Now it's going to look just like this. And when you hover over this more tag or this more tab, it's going to display these other options for sharing. So we're going to go ahead and scroll down and tell this plugin where we want these sharing options to appear. And I want to show these buttons at the end of all of my posts. I don't want to show them on my pages. We could set that, but I'm just going to use posts. So now let's save the changes. And then we're going to view our site. And we're going to go to our blog. And when we click on our blog posts and scroll down at the bottom, at the end of our blog post, we now have these social media sharing options. And when you hover over more, you get all of these different options too. So what's really cool about this is uh, LinkedIn, for example, or let's just use Twitter as an example. When your users click on Twitter to share this blog post, they're going to be taken to their login uh, screen at Twitter if they're not already logged in. And it, when they log in, it's going to automatically tweet the URL and the blog title of this post. So it's a really great and easy way for you to allow your users to share your content. All right, now we're going to scroll down and take a look at our comment section. Now, we're logged into our back end, obviously, so this is the comment section that we are currently seeing. But when we log out, let's go ahead and log out by hovering over that and then clicking Log Out. And then we're going to need to open this blog post up again. So I'm just going to type in my domain name. Click on Blog. And we're going to open up that post again. And scroll back down. Now, this is what the normal contact or the normal comment fields look like. You're going to have a name, an email, an optional website spot, and then the comment spot. Now, WordPress by default has comments enabled on new blog posts. And if you wanted to change those settings, you need to. We're going to log back into our back end. So I'm going to type in my domain name forward slash wp dash admin. Log back in with your credentials. And to see those comment options, you're going to go to settings, and then you're going to go to discussion. And like I said, by default, comments are enabled on new articles. And that is this box right here. Allow people to post comments on new articles. Now, what's really great is that you can override this setting on any of your individual posts. Individually, you would go to that post page, and I'm going to show you how to do that and you would just uh, check or uncheck a box. So if we unchecked this, and then if we scroll down and saved the change there, then from now, from this point forward on new articles by default, every time we did a new article, it would not allow comments on that article. So there wouldn't even be a comment section. But of course, we could still go in individually to each post and change that as well. So I want, I want to point out that. Now we're going to leave it uh, as it is. And the other thing I want to point out is this box right here but, uh, next to before a comment appears, comment author must have a previously approved comment. Now this is really important because what this does is it prevents a whole bunch of spam comments from showing up on your blog post. So basically somebody has, the first time a user submits a comment, it's not gonna show up on your post, but you'll get a little uh, a numeral next to this comment section. So if there's one comment put up, posted on your blog, it's going to show up here. So you would click on comments. 
and that comment would show up here and from this screen you could approve the comment and then it would show up on your blog post and now from that point on every time a user submits a, uh, a that same user submits another blog comment it's going to automatically appear and you won't have to approve it now of course you can always go in and delete comments if you find them unnecessary even after you've already approved a user so uh, to go and change the comment settings on blog posts individually you're going to go to posts all posts and then you're going to click on the blog post that you want to edit and the screen is not showing up here underneath sharing so what we want to do is go to screen options and make sure discussion is checked and then once you check discussion click on screen options again to close that now if you scroll down you have this allow comments this discussion section checked or showing up there so to uncheck allow comments if we uncheck that box and then saved the page comments would no longer be allowed on this particular blog post so that's how you would override the comment feature all right now let's talk about our widget areas and our layout options so we're gonna go to our widget section by going to appearance and then click on widgets and then basically uh, widgets enable you to add additional content and additional features to widget areas on your website now different themes have different widget areas but nearly all of the themes that you would use are gonna have at least one sidebar widget area now as you can see here on the right the customizer theme has a right sidebar a left sidebar widget area and then three footer, footer widget areas so a total of five widget areas which is great because you have control over all of those different areas of your site and you can add content and additional features to any one of those five areas of your site now WordPress by default automatically uh, populates the right sidebar widget area with these six widgets okay now we're gonna remove these because we're gonna add our own widgets and to remove these all you would do is click hold and drag over the widget and just move it back over here and anywhere in this box and just let go and if you had a widget that you had special settings for and you wanted to save those settings but still remove it you could drag it and release it in this section but we're we don't need any of these right now so we're just gonna click hold and drag and release over there to remove all of those now let's add a custom menu widget to our right sidebar so to do that we're gonna add a custom menu so click hold and drag here and we're gonna drag over to our right sidebar widget area and release that now you want to give this a title and we're just gonna call this navigation and what this is gonna do is it's gonna put a navigation menu on our right sidebar so that people could access our pages not only from the top menu but also from a menu on the right so we could select a menu if we had multiple menus created but since we only have one menu that we've created that's the only one that's showing up so we're gonna click on save now let's add a categories widget to the left sidebar so we want to work with our left sidebar so we're gonna click on this arrow to drop down our left sidebar widget area and we're gonna go up here and grab the categories click hold and drag that in here and what this is gonna do is it's gonna put uh, whatever blog categories we have the ones that we created when we added our new blog posts it's gonna show all those categories on our left sidebar for the pages that are displaying the left sidebar layout which we'll set up here later on now the categories widget you don't have to give a title because it will take on the title categories by default so we're just gonna save that and then we're gonna go down to our footer widget areas and open up our footer widget area one and we're gonna drag in a recent posts widget and that's gonna be right here we're gonna drag that over in our footer widget area one area and release that and what this is gonna do is it's gonna display our five most recent blog posts and we only have two so two will show up there we're gonna save that I'm gonna drag in a text widget and I'm gonna go over text widgets here in just a moment I'm gonna leave the text widget blank drag that into footer widget area 2 and minimize that and then I want to work with footer widget area 3 and I'm gonna drag a pages widget and this is a lot like a, a menu widget it's gonna display all of the pages that we have and you would have you would be able to navigate to those pages from the footer so I'm gonna make sure that's saved normally these save by themselves but it's always a good idea in my opinion to save them anyway 
So now we're going to go back and take a look at our the front end of our WordPress website. And you'll notice on our homepage we don't have a sidebar. We don't have any either our left or our right sidebar showing up. But we do have these footer widgets showing up. We have our recent posts widget in our footer widget area one. And we could click on these and be taken to those posts. And then we have our pages widget on footer widget area number three. And we could click on all of these and be taken to these specific pages. And the footer widget area two is blank because we, although we have a text widget in place, there's nothing in the text field. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that every other page and blog post on our site is displaying our left sidebar. So uh, by default, it takes on the left sidebar layout. And the only widget we have in our left sidebar is a blog categories widget. So our about page, our contact page, our blog page, which is our posts page, and then our individual blog posts, everything bes besides the home page is taken on this left sidebar layout. So we need to change that. And to adjust this, we're going to go back to the customize it screen. And the first layout we're going to work with is our home page layout. So let's click on front page. Click on that arrow to drop the options down. And then we're going to scroll down. And next to set up the front page layout, you can see that it currently has no sidebar. So if we scroll down to the bottom of our front page, we'll see that we have our front page content here. And if we click on no sidebars, then we have, and then change that to right sidebar, you'll notice that our right sidebar widget will now appear, which is our navigation, our custom menu there. And if we change it to the left sidebar, give that a moment to refresh, you'll have our categories widget here on the left. So we're going to leave our uh, homepage widget or homepage layout set to no sidebars. Now, if we Minimize this, and then scroll down to pay or, or move our cursor down to Pages and Posts layout, and click on the arrow to drop down our options. You'll see that the global layout is set to left sidebar, the posts layout is set to side left sidebar, and the pages layout is set to left sidebar. So that's why all of our posts and pages are showing the left sidebar. Now, if we changed our posts or our uh, pages default layout rather to show the right sidebar. Now what happens is everything else, uh, our blog page is going to take on the default left sidebar. Our blog posts, because we have the posts default layout set to left sidebar, are going to show our left sidebar. But our pages about us and contact us are going to show our right sidebar. And then, our, of course, our car pages as well. Just like that. So we're going to save and publish this. And actually, before I close out of this Customize It screen, I want to point out that this little section of text right here, these are called breadcrumbs. And this is just a way to um, enhance usability if you prefer that. And the way you disable that is right here under the pa uh, Page and Posts layout. You would just click that box, and those would no longer be appearing. So we're just going to leave those off and save and publish again and close out of the screen. And now we're going to talk about how to use text widgets. So we're going to go back to appearance and widgets. And before we work with the text widget that's in our footer, that's currently blank, I'm going to add a text widget to the top of my right sidebar. So I'm just going to drag that in above the custom menu, release that. Now in this section here, this is where we would add either um, arbitrary text, which can just be any text uh, that you want, and that same text that you type in here will appear on your sidebar, or we can put in HTML code, and that's actually what we're going to do. Now you don't have to know, that's the beauty with WordPress, you don't have to know uh, HTML code, and you don't have to know how to create it, because we're going to use the visual editor to write our HTML code for us, and we're going to create um, a link to our about page, and a picture that's the same picture on our about page, and link that picture to our about page and put that in this text widget. So to do that in a new tab, I'm going to open up, I'm going to go to pages, add new, and I'm going to right click on it or control click if you're using a Mac and open this link in a new tab. So I want to keep this text widget open. 
and then I'm just going to go in and make sure you're in the visual editor and I've got my text here I'm going to type in about this website click here colon click here okay and that's just text now I'm going to highlight this text and where it says paragraph I'm going to click on this and I'm going to change this to a heading four by just scrolling down there. Now these heading ones, one through heading six, all of these are going to take on that custom Google font that I've already set. So I know from trial and error that a heading four will fit all of this text on one line. Apparently I didn't make that change there, so I'm going to do that again. There we go. And now I want click here to link directly to my about page. So I'm going to highlight click here. I'm going to click this link icon and then I could copy and paste the URL of my about page there or the easiest way to do it would be to click here where it says or link to existing content and then I can scroll down and click on my about us page and then click on add link alright and now I'm gonna click next to click here and then click enter because I want to put a picture underneath this so I'm gonna click on add media and I've already got the media file uploaded to my media library because it's the same image that I used on my about page. So I'm going to click here and I want this file to link to not the not the image but to a custom URL. So I'm going to grab the about page URL by going back and we'll open up our website in a new tab. and go to our about page and we'll just copy the URL there and then go back and paste it in here and then I want this to be full-sized so I'm going to insert into page just like that and this is full-sized is the 300 uh, pixel wide image that I cropped early on or that I resized early on so now this this is the visual editor now if we click on the text editor this is what's really great this right here is the HTML code that writes out what we just did in the visual editor so we can copy all of this by highlighting it and then copying it and then go back to our widget screen and paste this into our text widget like that and click on save now if we view our website and we go to a page that's got the right sidebar because that was a widget that we put in our right sidebar so any of the car pages the contact page the about page they're all going to display our new text widget so we have this link click here and that's going to take me to the about page just like that and then if I'm on a different page just like the contact page I can click on the image and that's also going to link to directly to the about page so that's a great way to use WordPress to write out HTML code for you now let's go back to that page and we don't need to save this page so we're just going to go and move this to trash. All right, and now let's go back to our appearance widgets and we're going to work with the footer text widget. So we're going to open up footer widget area 2 and then open up our text widget and we're going to embed a YouTube video. Now when we did this uh, and put a YouTube video on our blog post, all we had to do was copy and paste the URL. Now with a text widget, it needs to have actual HTML code, so not just a hyperlink, not just a URL. So we're going to go back to YouTube, and we'll open that up in a new page here. And we're going to type in Antique Cars 1920s. And we're going to search, and we'll just click on the first video that shows up there. And then I'm going to pause the video and then all we have to do now since we can't just copy and paste the URL the way we share it is get the actual HTML code for this video and YouTube makes that very easy for us to do we're just gonna go click on share and then we're gonna click on embed and then we're gonna copy and paste this text into our footer widget just like that and then if we save and then we go and view our site the front end of our WordPress website here and scroll down to our footer we now have the video embedded into our footer now I'm going to scroll up here and we are going to replace this text with a logo so first we need to create our logo and let's go ahead and go to the customize it screen by clicking on that there 
And then we're going to click on Logo and Favicon. And right here, force logo dimensions to max width of 250 by 100. This is telling us what size uh, this particular theme, the customizer theme, prefers to have for the logo. So we're going to create a logo that is 250 by 100 pixels. And for creating this logo, I'm going to use a site called iPicky. So in a new tab, I'm going to open up iPicky.com. That's I-P-I-C-C-Y.com. And this is a great tool for creating logos. And when you get to iPicky.com, click on Start Editing. Okay, and now I'm going to go back to my back end and close out of this. And I'm going to open up my front end and go to my blog page. And I'm going to show you how to grab the exact same color as this orange here used for this icon. And that's the same color that's used for the text. And to do that, we're going to use a tool called Colorzilla. So in a different tab, we'll open up colorzilla.com and this is a, an excellent tool a free tool that you can use for either Chrome or Firefox so you click here and if you're using Firefox you want to be under the Firefox tab and you just click on install colorzilla and install that if you're using Chrome you'll use this tab to install colorzilla and after it's installed you should have an icon that appears in the upper right of your screen that looks like this and what this allows you to do, I'm going to go back to my blog page. If we click on this icon, it activates the Colorzilla tool. And now everywhere our cursor goes, it's going to grab that exact same color. So I'm going to put it over my orange icon there. And if you see up in the upper, or the upper center part of the screen, the pound F78C40, that is called a hex code. And a hex code is a six digit code that matches that color exactly. So I'm going to click one time and it's copied that to the clipboard. So now the next time I paste anywhere, it's going to paste in that hex code. So I'm going to use another tool called color.adobe.com and color is spelled K U L E R.adobe.com. And this is a color theory tool and it's going to tell me what other colors go with that same orange. So I'm going to scroll down here and select this hex code and replace it by pasting in that other code and I'm going to remove the pound symbol and then if I hit enter this is that exact same orange and now if we come up here to the upper left under color rule all these different categories are different color theories and if I click on compound it's going to tell me all the different colors compound colors that go with this orange shade I really like this brown so I'm going to include this orange and this brown in my logo. And the hex code for this brown is right here and we'll use that when we create our logo. So let's go back up to iPicky and we're gonna hover over this icon. It says create a new blend. Click on that and we already know we want it to be 250 pixels wide. So we're gonna put 250 in there and then we're gonna select the height and make that 100 and click on create. All right, and now we're gonna create a text layer by clicking on this text box and then we're going to click over here click hold and drag this text in to our our image there and we're going to type in I want this first line to say antique so I'm going to type it in this box here and then I want the size to be 60 so I'm going to change I'm going to click on 30 select that type in 60 and press enter and I'm going to click on this color and this is where I'm going to paste in the hex code. So I'm going to go back to the color wheel tool from Adobe. And I want that first line to be this orange. So I'm going to copy, I'm going to select this hex code, copy it, come in and paste it in here. And it's going to take that orange. And then I'm going to hit enter. Or actually, I'm just going to click there to get out of that. And then scroll down and choose my font. And for this logo, I believe I'm going to use the philosopher font and then now that updates this and I'm going to move this up and center it and move it to the top of my space there and click away just click anywhere out here and then I'm going to do another text layer by clicking on text and I'm going to type in 
automobiles. And I'm going to click, hold, and drag that underneath. Okay, and then I'm going to go back and change the size to 40. Hit enter. Drag that over here. And then I want that color to be this brown. So I'm going to copy and paste this brown hex code. right there and then I'm going to scroll down and change the font to that philosopher font just like that and I believe I can go a little bit larger I'm gonna I think I'm gonna make that 45 font size maybe even let's do 45 and then enter there we go and then I'm gonna click hold and drag right here and center this then I'm going to click on this other text layer and drag that over so that it's centered nicely there. All right, and then click out here to get out of that screen. And then the last thing we want to do here is turn off our background layer, which is this white color. We want it to be transparent. So to do that, just click on next to background, click on this eye icon, and that's turning that off. So now it's transparent. Now all we have to do is save it. So we're going to click on done. And then we're going to click on the save icon here. And it's really important that you change this file format to a PNG, which is going to make our background transparent. And that way our background will take on whatever background color we have on our website, which just so happens to be white, but it may not necessarily be. So you want it to be transparent. And I'm going to call this logo. And I'm going to save that. By clicking on save. And now we've created our logo. So now let's go back to our website and go back to the back end of our WordPress site. And actually just click on the customize it screen. And click on logo and favicon. Now we're going to upload the logo by clicking upload. And then we're going to find that file that we just saved and click on open. And then that'll refresh and show us what it's going to look like with our new logo there. That looks good. So now we're going to save and publish. All right, and now we have our logo. Now let's close out of this, and the very last thing I want to do is open up our site, and I want to remove this text so that our homepage is just showing these three featured images and the slideshow. So we're going to go back to the back end, and we're going to open up our homepage by going to Pages, All Pages, and click on home and all we're going to do is just select this text and delete it and before we update the page I do want to point out that you can add a slideshow to any page that will look just like the slideshow on the front page uh, but you can customize each slideshow by adding um, different slideshows and you could for example if we wanted if this was not the home page and our about page and we wanted a slideshow we could change this to yes and then we would select the slideshow, whichever one we had created. Now we only have one created, so if we created multiple slideshows, those options would appear beneath. But we're just gonna, of course, leave that to no, and we're gonna update the page. And view our website. And now if we scroll down, we'll notice that that text is no longer appearing there. All right, that wraps up the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you found the video to be useful and you liked the video, please subscribe to my channel and add the video as a favorite. Uh, like the video on YouTube, leave your comments below, all those things really help my channel out. So I appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you next time.